and this is part 19 of my 2022 Christmas Village full tutorial series and you know what? I am still behind schedule but I'm not that pessimist no yes I am that pessimistic but not that much anymore to be able to complete my village for Christmas maybe Christmas Eve but only if Santa will be very generous with me so what you will see in the next minutes slash couple of hours my attempt to push the steampunk elements of this village toward the extreme <laughs> what I meant by that you know that this is a Victorian era Christmas village obviously Caddington collection uh, buildings and figures from Lennox but also steampunk a Christmas village with what I've added until now and also uh, elements dedicated to uh, Victorian era and novelists, such as uh, everything you have seen up to, to now. But with part 18, I also introduced you a couple more statues. They are essentially figurines transformed in bronze statues inspired by steampunk philosophy. Queen of Arts and Alice from Alice in Wonderland, but modeled following the, uh, the philosophy, the steampunk movement, as it has been uh, originally thinked by uh, the science fiction writers in, in the late 1980s. Uh, more violent, more brutal, era than the normal Victorian era with a different timeline but I already explained this to you and the past few days I've modeled as much new statues as I could some of them are still 3D printing now and then I painted and assembled everything to give them a more um, statue aspect and this will push even more my steampunk, <laughs> my village, sorry, toward the steampunk, not the steampunk toward my village. Um, so, prepare to look at some time, some disturbing statues, but it is pure essence of steampunk to be sometimes disturbing, brutal, violent, uh, everyone fighting everyone. Then, then three more major buildings still to complete. Why three? I miss a bridge to connect the arbor to the train station. I will try to build this. Then I'm not satisfied with, sorry, with these little mini stairs I've added in the far left side to, of the layout to get access from the, this level here, the middle level, uh, with the corner level that is 4 cm higher uh, with the windmill in the corner. Yes, those were suited for my uh, 2020 layout because it, uh, it wasn't that steampunk, no, completely no steampunk. And Yes, effective, but not that good. Without forgetting that this is not exactly four centimeters uh, tall stair. So I will try to model a different stair for that. And uh, the bridge I told then, then guys, I miss a stair to get access from this level, from the uh, Morlock uh, uh, Sphinx Pyramid to the Scriptorium. Uh, not that much space, but I will try to get a new type of stairs there. I, I think I've hung it for some hours in the past day while modeling. Sometimes I was stopping modeling to turn myself because my PC is in that, in that corner. And I stopped modeling, then turned 
behind my back and then stare at the, at the corner to imagine a new type of stairs. I will try to do also that. Then, I miss some fences, some, uh, um, some modification of fences. These fences here, the canal fences, are perfect for any Christmas village. Uh, seasided, mountainside, every because they are fences, yes, preventing people from falling down, but also allowing you to see through them. I have a couple of them here too. You can have the full length, or if you cut uh, this in two pieces, uh, sacrificing the middle, you get some small pieces like that. Okay, this is just one here and one there, and then you lose the middle one. Perfect for cornered, uh, 90 degrees cornered, um, corners, okay, 90 degrees angle corners, okay, even different corner with sharp corners, but not for rounded corners. Imagine I wanted to place some fences around this border here, but with this I will get the triangles, etc., but not perfectly able to um, to follow the perimeter of something such rounded as a circle. And on the artboard down there, where I, want, I will place the big Poseidon statue, I have a, a, um, an ending that is very rounded. So I will try to start from this little uh, design here and try to model something that will be able to get a decent look, even rounded. Uh, yes, you can modify this by hitting this and trying to curve it a little bit, but it's not the same effect. And I will need to try to model something not that uh, defined, otherwise, yes, I can model it, but I will need to uh, um, 3D print each and single one of the elements with the resin printer that will take ages to complete what I need so many elements. So I will try to do as best as I can for printing with the filament uh, printer, with the FDM uh, printer. Uh, and then if it is good, I will, uh, I will mass produce them intensively. Uh, in the next days uh, to complete uh, some of the corners I still have. Uh, I think it's all... Yeah, ah, yes, and then, then at, at, at last, <laughs> please, but not... Yes, in the um, final uh, minutes of this village, I will... Oh, this part 19, sorry guys! I will need to place all the remaining buildings, uh, except for the two I haven't. <laughs> Uh, still uh, um, done a, a, re a full review uh, the two buildings I bought uh, a couple of months ago no, a, a month ago, let's say a month ago uh, but every other buildings need to be placed there because I think I will lack some space one thing is for sure this here, it, the Christmas village, my Christmas village will be overpopulated, very dense, everything close together, even if I had so much more space compared to last season, and I will have some problems filming it, I already know it. Enough with the talking, let's get to work. Good, good, good. Let's build something more. I will need one bridge to connect uh, the station to the rest of the Arbor. Then a couple of stairs, one stair for accessing the windmill section. I know I've already placed it last week um, some a couple of little stairs I've built for my 2020 village, but I'm not satisfied with the looking the overall looking. So I will rebuild one, and finally one big stair that will connect the second level, the level with the uh, Three Ring Circus, to the Scriptorium level, okay? That will be not that difficult, but a strange form, okay? Let's start with the bridge. 
and I will build this step by step as I will need to wait for the glue to dry before completing each and single of the three uh, designs. Styrofoam, three cut pieces, nine millimeters thick, and I have one, two, three, and four. This will be my bridge. It's similar to the concept of the twin stairs I've already used, but a little differently there. So the bridge accessing here and then from the other side. Length, 19 centimeters. The base, 19 centimeters by 6 centimeters of width. And I will proceed uh, single one by single one, not doing that, okay, but having uh, the same space from left and right, from left and right, I'm getting it very symmetrical. First of all, I will need some, uh, some big stones on the pavement there, so let's go with the big stones. Okay, ready for the next stairs. Okay, last week I told you that I wanted to use those two little stairs to get access from the level with the fountain, the same level as the uh, Twilling Circus Dome, to the windmill section that it is in the corner, in the far left corner, that is four centimeters. Um, higher than the this level here with the fountain but those are good looking ancient yes simply made also yes but i'm not that satisfied and they are not exactly four centimeters tall okay instead i want something wider to give more harmony to the stairs uh, like that so i have one two three four pieces of styrofoam nine millimeters thick two centimeters each time to get access from one step to the next then nine eighteen twenty seven thirty six thirty six millimeters it's not forty millimeters so i also added this little four millimeters thick, different type of uh, styrofoam. It's not that stiff, it's not that resistant, but uh, I use it each time I want to get a precise height because this is uh, even, this is 4 millimeters, those are 9 millimeters, so I will use this to complete to get 12, because 12 is not 
divisible by 9 millimeters, 12 centimeters is not div divisible by divisible, divisible, okay, you cannot divide 12 centimeters by 9 millimeters, but you can if you add some uh, even, even thick uh, pieces. So I will not do some big stones on those, I will simply um, get them uh, aged. simply done and I still need to add some railings uh, here and there but this will be very simple and but it is much more better because in here you simply have one centimeter of depth for each step except for the top one it's too narrow it's not good looking it is not elegant not harmonious Okay, this is much better, at least for me, another drying time. I think that some minutes ago, at least for you, I told you something very, very wrong. I told you that the last stair will, get, will grant access to the scriptorium from the Three Ring Circus Dome. No. They are on different levels, yes, but there is a difference of two levels between the scriptorium and the, the um, Three Ring Circus Dome. These stairs, in fact, will grant access, yes, to the scriptorium, but from the level with the Sphinx Pyramid, with the Moro Sphinx Pyramid. So, let's get into this. Here you have the Morlock Sphinx Pyramid, here you have some space and here you have 12 centimeters and then the scriptorium in the back. Then this is 50 centimeters in that. Then down there, down this level, up, down the, the, the third level, uh, you have the Three Ring Circus Dome. But here you have the Morlock Sphinx, yes, unused space, yes, a corner here because here you have the end of the layout. Okay, so I thought, why not using uh, some of these unused space in the corner here because the corners doesn't... Uh, doesn't help me getting through with placing all the buildings. It is uh, somehow um, non-usable space, at least for the point of view of the camera each time. Because remember that also my village needs to be filmed. I want the point of view being clear from each side. So I thought 
let's start with something like this. So, yes, here I don't have a 50 centimeters in depth, but let's imagine. The stairs will start here. So, Morlock Sphinx, space, 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 corner, etc. Up here, at least three steps, then 90 degrees left, then the rest up, 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 up to 12 centimeters. This is a way of uh, not wasting space for adding uh, stairs. I could have used this length here, but here I have the pyramid, the Morlock Sphinx pyramid, okay? So I can't get all this space from the corner of the layout here, I will add to um, and here, so can't get up to 12 centimeters with this narrow space. I went this way using some of the 50 centimeters, then this, this corner here to implement three more steps. More difficult to say than to see, okay? But it's a way of doing the stairs. I've never used this system, but why not experiment it each season? Those stairs are four centimeters uh, uh, wide, okay? Oops. Also, this will need some railings. Um, each time I have 12 centimeters with the nine centimeters, I need support for the lowest step like that so this is very long I think this is 350 millimeters so 35 centimeters very long but using uh, uh, this technique will allow me to have steps of three centimeters instead of two centimeters, okay? Those are three centimeters. Not the first two ones here, but those are three centimeters, allowing me to place some something on the steps, figurines or something else, because I will have a space to put there. So using this, uh, need, um, using this technique uh, need more space because if I have three centimeters each time instead of one let me rephrase it the shortest way to go up 12 centimeters is using 12 steps of one centimeter so nine millimeters or one centimeters then one centimeters one centimeters and one centimeters one centimeters and one centimeter okay so in this way i get the shortest um stairs possible and the quickest way to reach the 12 centimeters not good looking because it's too uh, like a little war there <laughs> it's too narrow mm. I don't like it, but if you if you are uh, getting problem with space, you can e always use this technique. So minimum one centimeter, otherwise less, it's not usable. So uh, imagine that uh, you have one centimeter, so one centimeter thick, one centimeter depth, thick depth, thick depth. So in this way, you get twelve centimeters by twelve centimeters. The shortest way to climb up 12 centimeters. This way, you only waste 12 centimeters of that. If you use two centimeters each time of uh, depth of the step, you multiply that by two, 24 centimeters of depth to get access to 12 centimeters. But this is more elegant but if you want something even more elegant more developed in length getting more space you need obviously to waste more and more space 
So no uh, big stones here. I will just uh, I will just uh, uh, go marking there. So the first two steps, as you can see, are two centimeters and then three centimeters because the next one. This one that is thirty five centimeters, and then each time uh, three centimeters. Okay, so let's pay attention to not damaging anything, and I will go. here 12 centimeters I don't know if you can see it but it is 12 centimeters uh, this will take at least five hours to completely dry because there is much much more glue than in the other two wheels in the bridge and in the long 23 centimeters stair for the wind mill and section so see you in five hours at least for me bye good some hours are fast i clean and change and prepare this little table for a, a massive work of painting i will need to do in the next hours but let's start with the three buildings there that i well, i started some hours ago. They are now perfectly dry. This is the bridge. This will become the bridge. This will become the stairs to get access to the windmill section. It is almost there. This is the quickest to do. Okay. And then the big stair that will grant access to the scriptorium from the uh, Morlock the Sphinx um, pyramid. Okay. I know that I told you that I would have uh, glued some wall pattern uh, here on the sides, but I risk to stain it right now, so I will do it lately uh, because I will need to paint at least uh, the steps here because I don't like them white, and also here we paint everything, and then I will certainly do the. <coughs> the side walls uh, especially for this one for the other two i will not need them most probably to do it 
but uh, because this is supposed to work as it is like that, I still don't know precisely the color I will do with this little bridge here. This will to be a bridge here. But one thing is for sure, they all need black wash as always uh, an excess amount of water and some black uh, paint, black uh, um, acrylic paint in it. So let's do the black wash, then I will have an update with you. No, maybe I will do the black wash and then start the painting. Anyway, I don't know right now because you said you already know my painting technique black wash and the other colors black wash that we take at least one hour to dry completely then horizontal painting with the other acrylic colors and then finally vertical painting only with a dry brush white and dry brush okay with white paint using a dry brush technique so uh, Ray, yes, this I don't know yet, and this is a big question mark on the colors. Big stones, yes, they are big stones, but how big, you know, they are here, but precise the color, I don't know yet. Let's do a black wash, I will start with, uh, with this one, obviously. I think it is almost dried, I made a mess, obviously. Good, so this is the big stair, oops, the bridge, okay, and the long little stair. Complete with dry brush, dry black, not dry brush, black wash all around the three of them. Now, let's, let me focus on the bridge because it will be so difficult to try to find the right color for it. Let's go with the bridge. Still uncertain, but you know how deep is my madness, okay? And you know that uh, as uh, you have seen, I use almost grey for my stairs, mix it with some white sometimes if I want to get here um, lighter, okay? But you also know that if I want something metallic, I mix this iridescent silver, very shiny silver. This is the most uh, perfect silver I've ever used. I've ordered massively these in the last two days. They still need to, uh, to be delivered because this is my last tube of iridescent silver I have for this season. Hope to receive the orders. But instead of using this, I'm going to do a mix, obviously, grey and white, but I also want to get metallic, but not iridescent. I'm going crazy, very crazy. I'm going with iridescent gold. You really have never used it before. It is the same brand as the Iridescent Silver. It has the same properties, but this is gold. Never used to simulate a metallic effect. Don't know what it will be the outcome, but I'm here to, to experiment. So let's try to get it done. Maybe I will, I will do a mess, but let's do crazy things. White, grey, 
three. As always, dry brush technique, the bridge, a very hard brush, let's try to see the result. And the two too light. Let's do a pose here. Yes, I will use it, but first I need a, a darker layer. This will be very reddish, guys. I love it. Very reddish gold this time. Strange yellowish gold. Yes, I love it. But I'm not here the one to judge. You are there to judge. So let me go with some grey. Simply white and grey together. Okay guys, not my usual color, but who knows, I needed to experiment sometime and this is getting shiny, okay? So even this gold iridescent uh, acrylic paint color is uh, very effective in getting something, a uh, metallic aspect. And instead of using some white here, I'm stopping with these three layers. So black wash, then I initially started with this mix of grey, white and a lot of really some gold and then stopped it because I wasn't satisfied to, it was too, too light, too whitish. So I went with some grey and some white and then finally with, once again with this mix here, to get different shades of color, iridescent sometimes, yes, but these anyways will not be in plain front view, will be far against a wall, but this is supposed to be steampunk, plenty of metal everywhere, so even a DS bridge can be made of uh, metal somehow, and I think I will go with this, but I'm not satisfied with the, with the size. I don't like the aspect, even using some grey and some other color, I'm not satisfied at all. I will need to find a solution for that, but uh, this will wait after I've painted everything, because I need to paint everything before. Then this is the last thing I will be doing is trying to find a solution for the sides here before applying the railings. Let's continue. The same technique, so I will go with the same technique with the long stair. So, okay, this is all for the stairs too, so here I went. I went with uh, black wash, then grey, then another another uh, tone of grey lighter in some other spreads. Then gold, mix of gold and grey, and then finally white. Not for the bridge, not for the bridge, because uh, I think it will uh, be like this one for now. At least for now, maybe I will change it. But this is the result. Even here, some gold, but less gold, less, less mix of gold and uh, grey here more intense and when inclined correctly it shines guys because the iridescent gold is as good as the iridescent silver uh, this is really good paint guys, this is really good 
I only use these two colors from these brands here, the iridescent silver and the iridescent gold, because they are almost perfect. Perfect, guys. Almost perfect. And this is the step. Only the steps, obviously. Same uh, mix and then some more white here. Uh, this is all before the wall and the railings. The railings will be something different guys okay so let me do a little pause yes i know i always waste so much paint but it is the only way i'm used to try to find the right mix of colors little pause i will try to print down some uh, words for the site there see you in just some seconds okay so as I told you, I'm not satisfied with the side here of the little bridge. So from my extended database of uh, uh, patterns, I've extracted this. This is a red metal wall scrubbed here and there, but this is a real wall, a real metal wall done from a little... Um, plates of, uh, of metal crusted in this case or copperish in this case. I tried to go exactly with the 9mm or so for each, uh, for each uh, layer or for each row here. So let's try to, to use this. This need to dry, otherwise I will do a mess in cutting this. So for now on, this will stay there. Now, the long stair here will not need any any wall, not on the back, nor on the on the sides. But this one too, and here. I will go with something very old, but also very colorful, guys. I will go with this one here. This is another old Italian ancient wall made from stones, little, big. This is also some marble. Uh, big stone, st uh, big um, cut of marble irregular, and some old ancient bricks too. This wall has been built layer upon layer, repaired many times during the centuries. And this too, guys, is from my database. This too is in Italy. This too is Middle Ages. Started in Middle Ages up to nowadays, repaired many times. I know I'm generally using some um, monochromatic color as bricks as my background in order to not uh, prevent uh, the focus of what it is in front of the wall. But this will be in the corner, so not in plain view. This will be the side view. This one will be in plain view, not the side. So I, I wanted for once something very colorful and I will use this one from both sides okay guys oof this is not bad so let me cut this
Okay, this is how I will proceed, as you have just seen. I will need to wait at least one hour before cutting everything and avoiding destroying the the the, <coughs> the pattern I just applied. Okay, uh, this is nothing right now. And then uh, I will cut this and then apply the handrails, the railings on the on both. The, the stairs and the bridge. Okay, see you in one hour, I think. Bye. Okay, I think it is dry enough. Let's go with this. The side now is better suited for this little bridge here. Okay, let's do the railing, guys. I went a strange with the railings for the bridge. Here I have the railings, one for the dam, and those will be the railings I will add here. I will glue them like that, okay? Here the concept is classic railings, but uh, pristine punk, so pure copper. I see that very simply this, guys. This is nothing more than some lines I drew on my software, vertical lines here, like that. And then a tube, I've, uh, the, I modeled a tube, a little tube of three, millim of three millimeters around these lines to get this and also then I connected the top oops then I connected the top of each line that was three centimeters tall because this is three centimeters guys okay two three centimeters from here to there three centimeters with another line then another tube very simply done this is to 10 minutes for three of them to model. This will be placed under everything to get an impression of stability. Triangles, guys, these will be triangles in just some minutes to share. So now, let me start from the back here, from the down, and I will try to go exactly in the middle. case I cannot use uh, super glue because super glue with filament, PLA or resin won't uh, work. I will need to use some epoxy glue. So let's quickly do some epoxy glue. Just uh, let's use this. No, it's still wet. Just a tip of component A and a tip of component B. Mix to one 
to 1 So I will need to uh, something to poke into the styrofoam and then I will place this into the holes and then glue some, not all of them, useless to glue all of them, just some of them. It won't drip anymore. So one here. Let's check 2.5 centimeters. Yes, and 2.5, 2.5, 2 2.5. Yes. Okay. So this is the quickest way to do something like that. I could have gone from the outside, but it is not that clean. Okay. So this is from the side too and this is dried, okay, cured. This is my little version of a bridge that you will see in the final recap when I will place it on the wharf. So, bridge done. Let's do the same thing with the stairs here. But for the stairs, I don't have one railing, I don't have two railings, but I have three railings. Same, same technique I've used before. This will go like that. One, two in the middle, three in the opposite side. I thought this will be a much more elegant way of doing things, okay? Okay, and so even these little stairs is done. I don't think this is so bad as a result for a stairs for last minute design, etc. I could have gone with simply the central one, yes, but I think this is more elegant. Up, down, or up and down, or up, up, down, down, I don't know. This is done too. Now, this will be more complex, guys. This absolutely will be more complex.
from this side I will go with two short, one here and one shorter here. guys this is done too and an L, <coughs> an L section here almost an L section a little L okay with the railings done two centimeters each the joining parts are not that visible that are not that much visible uh, I I haven't a 3D printer with such a large bed allowing me to print from this point here to this point here. So obviously I had to cut in half the printing model and then print it in two times. This is complete. So the stair, stair number two, that now practically impossible to remove without breaking anything and then the bridge that's all for this part let's continue with something else in the very first minutes of this part 19 during my intro I told you that uh, I wasn't satisfied with those Canal fences here because they are just perfect for straight lines and sharp corners, but not for rounded corners. So, what I did, I modeled this little guy here. Maybe I will, I have a bunch of them, it's black. I will approach the canal. Uh, it's not uh, straight, it is curved can okay. I don't know if you can see it but it's curved um, and so this is almost the same as those ones okay I, I told you that I could I cannot be so detailed with the FDM printer even printing at the maximum um, resolution possible because it is impossible for a filament printer to get that level of precision. Only a resin printer can do it. But it's, almost, it's absolutely the same height, then the horizontal lines are at the same, in the same spot. And when you place those side by side, You will get, and this is not horizontal, this is not plane, you will get a curve or a circle, okay, you can go one way, the other way, and then this will go this way and complete a circle, eventually complete a circle. It is, uh, I've done uh, segments of two because it is the minimum uh, needed to get a decent look and you can see that but also you can get a straight one here and then continue with some curved ones after a straight one like that and you can also place a short straight one and then continuing with some curved section this uh, will allow me to get curved fences all around my 
uh, the layout from here on, from now on. Uh, and uh, you can get a close circle, a very straight circle, if you bend it. And or a large one as you have just seen. You can also get a circle like let's open a little. like that so very useful this new design of fences it's uh, something that was absolutely missing from the Lemax collection I will put those uh, uh, on the on the other section okay so this is all yes printed this is not printed primed then two layers of uh, uh, black and iridescent silver, but not uh, brushed, but air brushed. Okay, the original color was white. Good. Let's continue with something more. Now, it is time for some new statues, guys. I will introduce them to you right now, then you will see them in my final recap. I will start with. This one, what does it say? M A R Y Mary. Obviously, this is Mary Poppins. Chimney smoke coming out of the chimney. Mary Poppins flying with his with her steampunk umbrella, with her bag that is steampunked and also. Um, some power engine for the uh, umbrella there. This is an Alice, so she can fly and she can go up too. I know, Mary Poppins is not a Victorian era. Mary Poppins uh, uh, has been invented, has been uh, invented as a char character by Pamela Lyndon Travers in 1934, so 30 years after Victorian era, and all her uh, books are set in 1910, from, starting from 1910, so nine years after um, Victorian era, in plain Edward, or at the end of Edward, King Edward uh, time. But it's so Victorian, Mary Poppins, so poetic, I couldn't resist to model this. Uh, starting from the chimney, getting up there. In all my new statues, I uh, done everything in bronze, and then the steampunk elements are gold. Here she has also... Um, a tool, a tool bag on her waist, and then this is the engine, the power engine for the umbrella here, like an Alice, she can fly. So I mark it simply Mary, and pedestal is marble, marble with some black, and guys, to paint this, this little stains here, I'm not using some brush I use um, these <laughs> I don't know this material this fabric that is inside uh, it is a filler it is a filler used uh, but for uh, multiple um, purpose uh, and uh, it's synthetic it's a polymer and it it has many 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 fibers coming out of from from it so it's well, well suited for painting those little stains those irregular little stains that are completely different one from the other simulating marble 
So this is Mary Poppins. Um, I will leave the disturbing ones for the end. One of the biggest uh, statues I've modeled is this one, guys. Impressive, gigantic. Look what it is <laughs> there. It's very little because it, it, it's so long, his name, Sherlock. This is Sherlock Holmes, Holmes or Sherlock. Anyway, it's very long, so I had to shrink the lettering. Uh, is it Victorian era? Yes, it is Victorian era. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle um, uh, wrote a, a serialized version of uh, uh, Sherlock uh, early in 1887 up to 1891, so in the plain middle of Victorian, no, uh, almost at the end of the Victorian era. All his books are set uh, on in Victorian times. And so behind is a, a, a clock because <laughs> and Sherlock was passionate by clocks but also was um, very, very um, obsessive by time and clocks. So, so many mechanisms in the behind. And then I imagine, yes, of course, he is five families. And uh, like uh, for the steampunk version, I imagine this as <laughs> I was inspired by a few things. I don't know if you remember a cartoon. Uh, from the 80s, 90s, Inspector Gadget. They, they also made a, a movie with uh, Matthew Broderick, but then all these tools with Inspector Gadget came from his head. His head, sorry, but it was a, a robot uh, inspector, a robot uh, private investigator. Uh, but this is this version of Sherlock as. Uh, as a version of an octopus. It's not an octopus because it's a, it's just one, two, three, four, five arms. But it also inspired me uh, octopus, the an <coughs> the enemy, the Spider-Man enemy that has so this octopus version here. But this is mechanic mechanic hands. So uh, 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 mechanic hand, a scissor, then then a little weapon that is also. Uh, gas weapon, then a microscope, then a photo camera, and then here a magnifying glass. What is Sherlock without his magnifying glass and uh, Norster here, and some googles on the head, and a monocular and a mechanical monocular on his left eye. Sherlock, this is the ver my version of Sherlock, very fragile, I know, but mechanical arms, etc. This is the pure essence of a uh, steampunk investigator during steampunk Victorian era. It was, oh, by the way, those are all fictional characters, not exactly, but almost all fictional characters from a book or a novel. So I, in, I'm also playing in the, with the theme of my 2022 Christmas village. And this is Sherlock in all his big magnificence. Uh, I don't know. Or, also a little <laughs> mechanical smartwatch. This is just for a joke. I imagine instead of having a watch in his pocket as it, they used to have in this area, what would have been a version of a smartwatch in that period? A very gigantic mechanical watch on his wrist. Okay. I know sometimes I make some jokes, but who knows? Maybe it's out of my mind. Next one. Uh, ne yes, next one. It couldn't miss. O L I V E R I. Oliver. Obviously, this is Oliver Twist. Very simple modeled. And in the Victorian era, 
Christmas Village, inspired by Charles Dickens' uh, uh, A Christmas Carol, this couldn't miss. This Oliver Twist is the second uh, novel uh, wrote by uh, Charles Dickens. And these two was serialized between 1839, uh, 1837 and 1839. So it is Victorian here. And I imagine that this also with some octopus ends, but what is better for a pickpocket than three more mechanical ends ready to, to pick some pocket? and I imagine him uh, running and getting into some water, so it is a big splash there. And this is not disturbing, uh, the scale is there because Oliver Twist is a child, an adolescent, a teenager, let's say. I imagine uh, going towards teenager, and it is uh, uh, shorter than other, the other statues. And the only mechanical steampunk thing is this mechanical arms set, three more arms ready to pick some pockets, or also for defending itself, because uh, it was hard times of that. So also Oliver Twist as a statue. I went from this strange pedestal here to rounded pedestal, mm, a mix, okay? Um, then, this is the third one. Then the most disturbing ones. Be prepared. One of the biggest one is this little guy here, guys. J and H. Jekyll and Hyde. Inspired by the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, it is from a Scottish novelist, Robert Louis Stevenson, and the, the book was wrote in around 1886, so another time, Victorian era. The, also, this is a steampunk, he has some inspired by Tesla coils, those are inspired by Tesla coils, but it, they are in the background, so I prefer the getting everything else. It, it, it's gigantic, guys, as Mr. Hyde should be compared. Uh, massive, uh, muscular, play, uh, full of muscles. Uh, the steampunk elements are these power units in his back, some pipes, some tubes uh, from, uh, his, from Dr. Jekyll uh, lab. Uh, for injecting himself, and then a very powerful um, uh, punch here, mechanical punch, and then some help, some mechanical help. It has a shoe, that, a shoes, and then no shoes. Uh, I've modeled this getting half with uh, a smoking, with a, a very well dressed uh, top hat, perfect top hat. Uh, this was supposed to be a smoking, a tight a smoking. Then broke the arms due to his big arms. And then Alf is Dr. Jekyll. Alf is Mr. Hyde. And a demon here. I modeled a demon head here on his stick, on his walking stick. I know Dr. J Mr. Hyde didn't use a walking stick, but Dr. Jekyll, yes. And so I've mixed both of them. Dr. Jekyll would never have used a, um, a heavy-headed uh, walking stick, but Mr. Hyde, yes. So another fictional, very particular character fictional and this will be in the center. I, I think I will place this uh, on the windmill section in plain middle of the section as a statue, as a surrounding statue. Come on, I will punch you guys. I know, disturbing, brutal, brutality was there in steampunk time. Uh, 
another one disturbing be prepared this is J A C K Jack this is Jack the Reaper guys and I made some dripping letters down there uh, some dripping letters so um, the the writing here are gold and then the little square is uh, um, black and it really sent silver. Jack the Reaper was not a fictional character. It was a real murderer. A real murderer, murderer um, that uh, has five confirmed victims at least and all murdered in 1888 so in plain middle of the Victorian era yes and I made him as a, a doctor a strange doctor with a circular saw on his right hand and some clothes on his left hands to get to, to rip people you know that Jack the Reaper murdered almost exclusively um, prostitutes, okay? But anyway, this is disturbing, I know. Uh, hand so circular so on his hand, then on his waist, uh, uh, an hand so, and then uh, some other uh, instrument of torture, like, um, like you can imagine like what and then a uh, plague mask because in steampunk it is uh, a, a character always present is a plague doctor because in steampunk period there were plenty of plagues plenty of disease also punishment for being so violent and a little thing here I modeled this as just too close, but a Wolverine. <laughs> the 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 char character from the um, the comic books, but Wolverine has three claws coming out from he, both his hands from here from both his hands. So here I placed the just too close, not coming out from his hands, but touched on the wrist and getting inside uh, inside his coat with a mechanism then his bag there with where he had his mortal instrument and this is disturbing guys yes but this is very dynamic this is also for a steampunk uh, village be aware the following one is the most disturbing one and I don't know if it is a well known this is T-O-D-T -T, Todd this is Sweeney Todd a scissor and not a scissor on his waist mechanical uh, right uh, um, leg and then on his left hand a severed head with another scissor stuck into the forehead of this dyed man and then a chair this is a barber chair because Sweeney Todd or the demon barber of Fleet Street uh, it is supposed maybe to be a real, uh, not a character, but a real person. But it was inspired and this was uh, uh, serialized in, the, in 1946 and 1847 in the String of Pearls um, uh, uh, serial novel. But this is set in 1785, so at least 100 years before 
uh, Victorian times, but this is very disturbing, guys. Why? I've used a scissor and like that for the barber. Uh, Sweeney Todd is a movie also. And the main actor was Johnny Depp, who also played in Edward Scissor Hands, <laughs> Tim Burton. 1994, Edward Scissor 2007 for Todd Sweeney, for Sweeney Todd. Anyway, the story, the barber who was completely mad, crazy and murdered all his customers. And then, instead of disposing of the, of the bodies, he sent them to his accomplice, Mrs. Lovett, who used them to bake some meat pie and feed our customers. So very disturbing guys, I know, but also this is pure steampunk, even if it's set in 1785. The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, the most disturbing one. And for now, those are all the six statues I modeled and printed and painted all along this week. I still I will still add one, a gigantic one, and it will be the last statue, the last Simpac statue I will add, and uh, it is related to the first two statues, Queen of Hearts and Alice in Wonderland. The most iconic character from that book, you, know, you already know who he was. And uh, those are the six statues, guys. I know you are hating me right now, but this will make my village even more steampunk. I will show you all of them uh, where I want them to be in my final recap. Like I don't have what you need. Thank you. 
don't see What's yours for the taking tonight? Finally, the final recap of part 19, guys. And almost every building I want for this 2022 series is there. Okay? Except for two spots. One behind the fountain and two there. Those two spots are reserved for the two buildings I bought a month ago. And I still needed to make a review of them. And uh, so I also changed a little bit there. I needed to sacrifice my intention to have the lake there because I needed some corner space to add those buildings there. So the building, the hidden cove seaside uh, building is now kaput. It is for next season. Everything else is there, still needed to slide a little bit the right or left. But let's start with the harbor section. So my new design concerning the rounded uh, canal fences work. As you can see, I made, I, I did a test there. So it perfectly, it, it is perfectly capable to uh, go around a circular perimeter and it melt very well with the straight canal fences from Lamax. So this is new design, I will mass produce them because it is an effective design. The Poseidon statue is there once again, a couple of part bench. The bridge, there, absolutely and it is absolutely uh, there and it has the right dimension. I made some right calculation for once and there with people getting access to the station here and then to the pub, etc. Then all the buildings, this one is giving me trouble. I still don't know if I will place it there. Then, 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 what else? Oh, yes, the, the stair, the long stair is there. Okay, maybe I will go, sorry, like that. Uh, sorry. Voila. The, the stairs is there, and once climbing the stairs, you face the big Jekyll and Hyde um, statue there. A corner still needed to reposition here and there. Then the other statues are there Mary Poppins, Sweeney Todd, Jack the Reaper, and Oliver Swift. Simply because all along there I have enough space to make some sort of town market or similar, uh, and uh, this will not prevent for uh, this will not prevent the view of the buildings that will be behind them. Uh, the uh, Sherlock statue is there between Lucy's chocolate and the French patisserie. Then I added some walls there. Still work in progress, guys, but uh, the big stair. Okay, the big stair is here with the wall, etc. So uh, during the shooting here, I had a different building here. I have a residential building that now it is in the corner right there, but it was too tall. This is the shortest building I have that was placed down there. I, 
I inverted the, the, that building and was that building was down there. So I made some inversion because I needed the, the shortest possible uh, building right here because otherwise the scriptorium will be hided by other tall buildings. Generally, this is 17 centimeters. Generally, buildings are from landmarks are 20 to 23, 24 centimeters. Then this one, the market is in the corner. It doesn't prevent anything because the action will be from the center there, will be from the center going up there and, and so on. Uh, I still need uh, um, a last stair to get access to the corner residential area right there. I will need to find a quick solution for next time to add a small narrow stairs to get access to the last residential there with the hill view in and a couple of residential building that I will add something more. Maybe I will do a, an inversion of that building. No, I will get that as it is. And so uh, it's a pity to have the nutcracker, the uncovered nutcracker shop only there, but it is very tall. And I will not need to have a complete view of what will be inside the cavern there. So it will be enough to let you see something true, but not everything. So it is there. Maybe I will find another solution. I will for the uh, Aunt Kevin new cracker shop. I didn't want to have the two of them side by side uh, because they are almost uh, similar. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe some sliding here and there. The post office is here in the corner always because uh, I wasn't uh, sure if placing the uh, post office there or there but I say not in front of the church near the church here I will have some little garden some other fences uh, then I still don't know but the important for me was uh, to have everything every building from from now on placed on the layout do I miss something uh, yes, most probably I miss something, but it is even more late than the usual, and I still need to uh, do the editing of this old part 19. Uh, I will most probably not sleep a single second this night. Uh, so, uh, up to you to judge, guys. Uh, what I did in this part 19. So see you in just some seconds for the outro. I was afraid of not having enough space for everything I wanted and needed for this 2022 Christmas village. Instead, I have still plenty of space at my disposal and every building is there. I will place uh, easily the, the 100 or maybe 150 and more figurines I have, the props or the props or the little stands uh, and also have some space for creating uh, some micro scenes here and there with some of the walls I use at the year for, the, for uh, setting the church. For once I was lucky guys, I will most probably slide here and there something but not that much. Practically all the buildings are there except for one building that I had to suppress as I told you and the two free spots will be taken by, uh, will be take, will, I will place in those two free spots the last two buildings I bought for this 2022 season. The stairs, the couple of stairs and the bridge didn't come that bad, at least for me, but I'm crazy, I'm mad. Up to you to judge. And so let me go editing this long video. It's almost 3.40 a.m. I think. 
3.35 a.m. So please don't forget to subscribe, comment and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching, thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and see you next time, but only if you really wish.